Heading west beyond the Ripagenus Dam, traffic thins out on the Golden Road. The rafters, fishermen, and occasional patches of pavement seen on the first 30 miles or so out of Millinocket gradually disappear. Out here, the Golden Road becomes straighter, more austere, its utilitarian purpose as a logging road evident, a dusty replacement for the legendary river drives of yore. Yeah, they shot the horse out from underneath us with the Golden Road, but uh, put a whole lot of people out of work. Chuck Harris and Jeff Fail are among the few who remember how things used to be up here in the woods. Both worked on the last river drives in the mid-70s. Once they started trucking on the Golden Road, the drive ended, everything got lost and nobody seemed to care about it, uh, saving the history. But they care, and that's why the Chesuncook Boomhouse is now a registered historic site and nonprofit museum. Harris has spent years collecting artifacts that reflect a way of life now gone and a world he once knew. All the old timers that taught me and I work with are all gone. They've all passed on. The boom house was a boarding house for the river drivers. For hundreds of years, floating timber down the rivers was the only way to get wood to the mills. It was an almost unimaginably difficult and dangerous job. But it was fun, adventurous, I guess. I thought it was as, as a young fellow, so I stayed with it. Today, the museum is open in the summertime. That's called a hook pole. See the cork screw in the end of it? If you're lucky, Chuck Harris will be around to share some first-hand pointers on river driving. As it is, a distant time and place in the North Main Woods is alive and well here on this point overlooking Chesuncook Lake, truly a labor of love. So we're trying to save it, and it's a tribute to many men at work, these drives that, that couldn't tell the story. Our next stop requires the traveler to pass through another checkpoint, this one unmanned, connected by satellite phone to North Main Woods headquarters in Ashland, Maine, more than 100 miles away. Well, we came through Caribou several hours ago, and now we're leaving through Cebu. No doubt there is a certain monotony that comes with driving through more than four million acres of undeveloped forest. But invariably, the unexpected makes an appearance. Everybody loves the shot up mobile sign. We find our way to the Sabumic Wilderness Campground, just down a skinny dirt road from the locally famous mobile sign, now the unofficial trademark of the campground. Owners Whitney Gray and Norman Lewis are self-admittedly an odd couple. He, a retired game warden, she, a practicing Buddhist. I'm the vegetarian, and Norman's idea of cooking is to put a deer steak on a stick and wave it over the fire a couple times, so we are completely opposite. <laughs> One thing they agree on, the beauty of life up here in the wilderness. Their camp sits at the very top of Moosehead Lake, but the camp is named after the nearby Sabumic Dam. Why? It's more fun to say, Sabumic. <laughs> there are tent and RV sites, as well as old-fashioned lean-tos. Any evidence of barbed wire has been removed. You see, in an earlier incarnation, Sabumic Wilderness Camp was one of several World War II prisoner of war camps in Maine. Most of them were from Rommel's African Corps. So they were actually cream of the crop for German soldiers. When the war ended, the camp was bulldozed and replanted with trees by the paper companies. Fortunately, some fields survived, making a spectacular setting for the Sabumic Wilderness Camp a long way from anywhere, but as close to heaven as it gets for a certain few. People complain about the road, but you see the road keeps it not populated because it takes a lot to get here. You really have to want to be at Sabumic to be here. 